Hey, what is going on YouTube? You're here from MJ Tech. Today coming with a new motorcycle that I picked up from TexasPowerSports.com. Typically these guys are excellent. I haven't had one issue with them. It has been out on the market since 2019, so approximately three years now. And there's a couple of videos out there, some great videos about maintenance, people riding it. But of course, the reason you guys are seeing this video is because I wanted to provide my own insight of this bike like i said before they are claiming that it has 250 cc's but then if you read in the description of the website that i have provided down below they are saying that it performs like a 350 cc now i did a little deeper research into this model and this is also called the john way so it is spelled j-o-n-w-a-y then g-t-o and if you search it it is listed as a 350 cc bike in which in reality it has 332 cc's but i think it has been detuned to work more like a 300 ish 250 ish cc motorcycle and if that's the case we can tune it again and make it run a lot faster this engine right here is water cooled so that's great meaning that it has a radiator it has coolant and it has a fan, it has a parallel twin motor. According to the site, it is a 24 horsepower motor. Uh, the gas tank, I believe this is over 3.5 gallons. It has 17 inch tires. Uh, I already ordered a couple of things for it that I'm gonna do right off the bat. That's going to be the chain. I'm going to do the fender delete, in which I believe that the one for the Kawasaki Ninja 300 fits, just like we saw with the X-Pro X24. Uh, we have here, again, the chain. We had the spark plugs. I got the 10W40 full synthetic motorcycle oil. I got, I think it takes a little bit over two quarts. So I got three in total. And that's what we will do here to this bike so far. So here, without further ado, let's take it out of this cradle. I'm going to expedite things and just go straight to when I have it completely out with all the plastics removed. It comes with an extra box where I think we have some decals and the mirrors. And we're gonna continue talking about it, guys. So for our surprise, this bike comes fully assembled. Keep in mind that there's two different prices. If you get it fully assembled like this one is right now, then that's going to be about 3,267, I believe. If you get it unassembled, in which comes without the front wheel, it comes with the rear suspension completely down, then that's gonna cost you about $2,900. And it comes with free shipping, which is really cool. Again, all we have to assemble now it's just the uh, handlebar here. So for this, this is a size number six Allen. We have to remove the bracket that holds it in place like so. By the way, this bike has a weight of about 367 pounds approximately. So that's uh, a little heavier than the uh, first two 250 CC bikes that I already uh, had before. So right here, we're going to leave it just about there. Let's increase it maybe slightly more. Okay, let's see here. Let's move it a little bit to the side. Right about there. Like I said, this is just eyeballing it for now. There we go. Okay. Alrighty, guys. So we got... This thing off the cradle, as you can see, everything is outside right now. I went ahead, the first thing I did was inflate the tires to the proper PSI. The front is 32 and the back is 36. We still have a box here in which I haven't checked what came inside. I'm assuming it's going to be some of the decals. It didn't come with any. And this is something that a lot of you guys will like about this Vidachi GTO, is the fact that it doesn't come with the decals installed, which uh, means, uh, by the way, these are the mirrors. Not my favorite mirrors, to be honest. They're too chromey for my likes. I might get these replaced, but these are the mirrors. 
But what I was about to say is that it doesn't come with a decal, so you don't have to uh, worry about you know, taking them out. Uh, sometimes they come with a clear coat on top and they are permanent. With this one here, that's not the case. Let's see what comes inside of this uh, heavy box. And this is the battery, as you guys can observe. So um, this acid has to go inside and then I think we have to charge it. I'm not 100% sure. To install the battery, it's quite simple. All you need is a size five Allen driver. And we have to remove this trim piece because behind it, we're gonna have two bolts holding the seat in place. Uh, very similar to many motorcycles out there. Okay, so I just got this one off. Let's see, and apparently these two come out together. So let's see if that's actually correct. And the screw that you had to remove for the seat is right there. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that's a size five as well. Let's go ahead and get it out. There we go. Now we do the same thing here for the other side. So this is the battery compartment. To add the acid to this battery, it's not that complicated based on what I read here. So all you have to do is just uh, remove this film that comes on top of the battery itself. Then you have this cover. This goes after you add the acid. Okay, so we go on like this. All right, let's see. I believe we got it on there. Well guys, this is it. It is that simple. Now we have everything locked in place. Alrighty guys, so now to plug the battery, it's quite simple. All you have to do is strap it first. I would recommend doing this before connecting the terminals. So it comes with these square nuts. Uh, you have to put these underneath the uh, terminal here. So this is the positive. What we gotta do is simply put it on top. Now we wait until the nut gets grabbed by the screw, like so. Okay, there we go. We got this one done. Now we grab here my little impact drill with a 10 millimeter socket and get it tight. There we go. And then this is the positive. Make sure they're tight. Now we put the uh, covers on to avoid corrosion, like so. That looks professional already. And check that out guys, we got the positive and the negative. Now we check for power and voila, we do have power. It even cranks. All right, fuel is done. This is about two gallons, so I think I have about half a gallon right now. Let's go ahead and lock this up. All right, now make sure that you put it on the run position on this bike. We have the uh, emergency light switch here on the top. Then your kill switch is here at the bottom. We have the starter, then we have the horn, the signal lights, the high beams, the low beams, and the flashers right here, guys. So let's go ahead and flick the switch. I can hear that fuel pump running. First start, right away, it sounds so nice. Check that out. Let's give it a little bit of throttle now. Sounds nice. Something cool about this Vitashi GTO is the fact that you can change the cluster from kilometers to miles or miles to kilometers. The process is super simple. You simply flick the switch on the on position like I'm doing right now. It doesn't matter if your kill switch is on or off. Now we press and hold the reset button for a few seconds, like so. And right there, we just change it to kilometers. Now, if we do the same thing again, press and hold for a few seconds. 
now it went into miles per hour well guys here we have taken all the fairings apart from the Vitashi GTO and well I have great news this bike has a different engine and I wasn't expecting it uh, this one here is actually a six speed transmission I haven't seen anybody out there with this particular motor except for a group that I created in which that group has been provided down below I saw another gentleman he has exactly the same white color one and this uh, again has the six speeds now also if you compare this engine to the 2019s and the 2020s this engine has a different cooling mechanism now it goes pretty much all around the engine where before it was just a pump here basically cooling the transmission area but that has changed now we get better cooling uh, also when i took the fairings apart it was with the intention to make sure that all of the bolts are tight as i mentioned uh, at the beginning of this video even though it came assembled all we had to do was put here the uh, handlebar it's always recommended that you take everything apart guys or not everything but in terms of the fairing so that way you can have a clear access inside of the major components for instance uh, this bolt right here was about four turns loose so when i put my impact gun in there it turned it like four times before actually being properly tightened and these are the things that i'm mentioning that if you guys do this precautionary uh, maintenance then your bike uh, will work fine for a very long time so a couple of things that i've done is add a few decals i did already the fender eliminator i got some decals here some protectors for the gas tank and uh, i like the combination between white and green i also got these mirrors right here these are anodized aluminum uh, mirrors and they are super sturdy i got some caps here for the old mirrors uh, we're going to get installed they were super ugly chrome and we know that in 2022 chrome is basically obsolete especially on bicycles that's more for like a classic bike so i didn't use them and also the end caps i didn't use them either because i got here these type of mirrors in which they replace those end caps we got a uh, led headlight as you guys can tell this is not led it looks terrible if you look here on the side they have that bluish color leds and then this is yellow it doesn't go well with it uh, i already showed you guys how to change from kilometers to miles if you're buying this here in the usa or if you prefer kilometers for some reason that's okay as well another thing i did or tried to do was to remove the air box i bought a filter it is right in here by the way it is a 45 millimeters so i bought this filter I took this apart, which wasn't easy to get apart. There's a bracket holding it up here, as you guys can observe. And what happened is that the intake was uh, flexing up and down too much, causing stress to this uh, rubber uh, clamp right here. So this rubber piece. And I was afraid that this was going to break eventually. So what I did is that since I couldn't tie this uh, strong enough, I put the air box on. But the cool part about this air box is that it is not restricted that much. I, I tried it and it's actually not that bad. So I took this off again and put that back on there. If I find a way on how to attach this to the frame somehow, then I'll go ahead and remove it again. Of course, this is going to breathe better, but this one is not as bad as I anticipated. I went ahead and right off the bat replaced that chain. So this uh, fender delete came from a Kawasaki Ninja from... 2013 all the way to 2017 it fits right on no issues whatsoever no cutting no nothing it fits like if it was made for it i did replace the spark plugs these are the ngk iridium 7803 so i got them to 0 0.025 that's the recommendation in case you guys didn't know it tells you how to maintain it right here with this uh, tag is it tells you what the gap needs to be so it is zero 0 0.025 the last thing i'm going to do here is uh replace these uh coils uh the bike is it's kind of like stuttering a little bit especially when you are uh, on fifth gear and the engine is a little bit more relaxed you can feel it pushing you a little bit that's why i tried the spark plugs but that didn't work so i'm going to get 
uh, different uh, ignition coils for both sides, test them out and hopefully that'll make things a little better. Uh, other than that, everything else is great. Uh, the coolant reservoir was low when I took out the fairing, so that's why it's important that you guys check it. I added some coolant to it and the bike is pretty much set to go. I did change the oil already to the Mobile One 10W40 oil, uh, full synthetic, and that has been completed as well. I checked the pressure on the tires, I added the rim tape, and with that being said guys, I think we are ready to take off and do the first impressions. The bike only has about six miles, but yes, I put um, at least five miles into it. And uh, yeah, so let's go on for a ride and check this out. What is going on guys? Coming back here with the Vitachi GTO. And from the time of the unboxing to the time of the testing, a lot of things uh, took place. I went to Puerto Rico. I started the video. I couldn't finish it uh, because of weather conditions and just uh, I didn't have enough time. And well, today we have uh, Hurricane Ian uh, touching grounds uh, by Cape Coral. But I live on the opposite side of the coast. I am in uh, West Palm Beach. So uh, I found uh, this dry moment here, uh, a, a little windy, but I think I can go ahead and give you guys the first impressions. I already done a couple of upgrades uh, with this bike, but we're gonna talk about them as I am riding. Uh, this is a fuel injected uh, parallel twin engine, and it gives about 24 horsepower. In reality, it has 332 cc's, and in China, this is sold as a 350 cc bike. There we go, we just got it started. Uh, I did an oil change. I did the mirrors here on the sides, as you guys can tell. Uh, we're gonna be using my phone as a uh, GPS pedometer. I already tested it, and it is about uh, three miles off uh, between uh, the bike's uh, speedometer and the GPS. So that's, uh, I will call it quite accurate. Uh, on the left side here, we have the high beams, low beams, uh, turn signals. We have the horn, sounds pretty good. Then we have the hazard lights right here. Uh, normally this is a kill switch. It's kind of weird how they made the hazard lights this time. Uh, normally we don't have a high beam and low beam on these Chinese bikes, but we do have a passing uh, little switch here. And then we have the kill switch here by the middle. And at the very bottom we have the start switch. So it's in neutral now. Uh, this GTO, comparing it to the other GTOs that uh, we have seen about two, two years, three years, uh, there is a big difference in terms of the transmission. Uh, first of all, this one is what they call the upgraded version. It has now six speeds and to me it's a, it's very smooth. It's a very smooth tranny. The only issue that I'm getting with this bike um, as of right now and I'm suspecting that it could be some faulty, uh, maybe a faulty or that both uh, fuel injectors are for some reason clogged up is that I'm getting these little hesitations sometimes and it's coming from the engine. I already did the coils on it. I changed both of the coils thinking that that could have been the issue and apparently it wasn't. I bought them from Amazon. I did the spark plugs and these are the NGKs 9803 and that wasn't the case. Uh, I did gap in my 0.25. These are iridium. So we have uh, very strong wind conditions today. That's not helping me a lot today, but I just wanted to give you guys here before the weather continues and it gets worse, give you guys the uh, first impressions in which uh, you definitely deserve it. So this bike has a lot of potential in the sense of uh, upgrades. You can do a lot of things to this bike and make it go decently fast. I would say this bike can reach easily, and I'm talking about super easily, it can do 100 miles an hour, guys. Uh, this one, like I said, uh, 
for some reason uh, I call it an illegal import I, I think that it could be uh, you know I haven't read any regulations or laws yet uh, so I'm a little ignorant about that particular subject but I think what I'm suspecting is that when you pass certain uh, engine displacement on imports then things start getting a little bit more expensive for instance I think that up to 250 cc's uh, legally uh, then the, the taxes and the import fees and all that they are set at a certain amount so this being a, a real 332 cc's well things change a little bit and well I think for that reason they detuned it to make it seem uh, you know that it is a true 250 cc's when it's not and I can feel it in the power right now as I'm riding this thing hasn't broken in it has now 13 miles on the odometer and uh, you know I can feel the power difference I mean it feels already a lot more powerful than those true 250 cc's and actually the Titan and the X-Pro uh, both bikes that I uh, already have here on the channel they were both uh, <laughs> I had a guy there mocking me because of the wind showing me that I was uh, zigzagging <laughs> that's funny winds are strong today guys winds are about 30 miles approximately and like I was saying with the Titan uh, 250 and the X-Pro, those are true 229 cc's. So yes, the acceleration was quite different. Right now here we are on fourth gear and the bike is doing, it says here on the uh, GPS 4850. And I don't feel like I have to go on fifth gear, but since it is breaking in, I don't want those hard RPMs to to kick in you know because again the engine is, is too brand new the height of this bike is definitely uh, you know different to the Titan and the X-Pro that I uh, review for you guys uh, this one here I would say it's a lot more suitable for people I would say minimum you had to be five foot six five foot seven with this one because even me being five foot ten when I stand, uh, I'm on tippy toes. So five foot six, five foot seven, that's perfect. And I would say if you're taller than six foot three, six foot four, then this is too small for you. So yeah, I'm five ten, and I feel just right on this bike, guys. Very nice and relaxed. Also, the tires, surprising enough, even though these are stock tires, and normally I've had up until now. I have only bad experiences with them. Um, with this one, it actually feels nice and balanced. So I don't think uh, the tires will be an issue with this one, which uh, will save me at least $300. That's cool. The engine is super smooth right now. Uh, I don't feel the uh, handlebars vibrating and you know, I'm already doing like about 50 miles an hour, specifically here according to the GPS I'm doing 48 and I don't feel like like my hands are getting tired this is more like an upright riding position also comparing this to the uh, typical 229 cc bike from China in which now there's a new Venom uh, X22 T Max that engine on that bike as well is the same as the Vitashi Titan and the X-Pro X24, just so that you guys know. So comparing it to those models, uh, this bike right here has a cooling system. So we get a radiator with coolant, we get a fan, and to me that's, uh, it makes it seem like more sophisticated. So we're gonna make a quick stop here just to wrap it up. Alrighty guys.
neutral is like super nice super quick we don't have to wait until it breaks in to get that very cool little bike guys well guys that is it for today's unboxing setup and first impressions of the Vitashi GTO the next thing I might do here is upgrade the uh, the exhaust right here that's going to be maybe done in the future the tires are pretty good for now the brakes are as well they're very nice and responsive I did already as you guys can see right here I did the fender eliminator and it came with just one tiny damage and that was the one here on the side because it was rubbing against the metal piece inside of the cage so that's the only damage that I found on the bike and everything else is pretty good guys I'll keep you updated with the review and the mods that I've done to it I will most likely show you guys what I did the only thing I reversed was the air filter mod in which I typically remove the air box and add a cone style filter but with this one it's a little different uh, right here we can see that we did 53 top speed the bike now has less than 20 miles and everything looks pretty good guys oh and by the way I did uh, replace here the LED light on the front it looks very cool but I'm gonna wrap it up guys it's getting kind of windy here today thank you for watching and I'll see you on my next one